Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. This is your host, Thomas Sire from On The Hot Podcast. Today, this will be episode 74 for you guys. This week, it's just going to be a solo episode, just your host only. Of course, this episode is going to be coming out on all four of our platforms, our Instagram account, our Facebook account, our YouTube account, and our Apple Podcast account. So this is going to be episode 74 for you guys. Kicking things off with the first segment, uh, since we are heading into week nine, we're in the midst of the second half of the NFL season at this point. I'll begin my letter grade for the Dallas Cowboys first half of the NFL season so far. My letter grade, I should say, for the Dallas Cowboys performance in the first half of the NFL season. Right now, on an unbiased opinion, I am pretty happy and pretty content at how we are. The letter grade I will give my team is a B+. Plus. After week one, when Dak Prescott suffered that finger injury in the fourth quarter in that horrendous, devastating loss against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, losing that game Sunday night, 19-3, to week one, everyone thought the season was over with Dak Prescott most likely heading to injury reserve, but that wasn't the case. Dak Prescott missed five games in a row, and I said on the podcast after that week, I said my frustrations and how I felt about Jerry Jones and the Dallas Cowboys at that point. But I said we are down, but we are not out. And now looking back at that, we are in the midst of going on a run in the NFC, in a weak NFC conference this year. So it's pretty exciting to find myself in that pre, in that situation. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys currently find themselves at 6-2, and two, tied for second place in one of the best divisions in football in the NFC East. They're competing in that division. It's one of the toughest divisions in football. I remember the NFC East was actually called the NFC Least. For quite some time because the Dallas Cowboys were just dominating and dismantling anybody, any team that was in that division. Now you're looking at the Philadelphia Eagles who find themselves at 7-0. You have the Dallas Cowboys who are 6-2 and or are currently tied for second place with the New York Giants at 6-2 and and the NFC. So the NFC East has emerged as one of the best divisions of football. But this Dallas Cowboys team has looked pretty impressive to be 6-2 and at this point. Defense has carried the load and helped out this team while Dak Prescott missed 4 out of 5 games. Cooper Rush led the way, helping, or five games, I should say. Cooper Rush led the way for the Dallas Cowboys. Even though in the backup quarterback role, he played a similar role like Jimmy Garoppolo is, a game a game manager, not playing clean football all the way up to the point until that Philadelphia Eagles game. Did his part as a backup quarterback, won four out of five games without Dak Prescott. The defense has been the story of this Dallas Cowboys team so far. I think it's been the strength of this Dallas Cowboys team this season. They lead the league in sacks and with 33 sacks, 7 interceptions, 9 forced fumbles, 6 fumble recoveries, and 2 forced fumble, uh, touch, uh, two forced fumble recoveries that went for uh, touchdowns. And I like that. I would like to mention, uh, honorable mention, I like that fumble recovery uh, touchdown that Michael Parsons had in that Sunday game against the Chicago Bears where he crouched down on the field. Recovered that fumble, was untouched. Justin uh, Justin Fields just needed a cleat or something to accidentally hit him. Didn't touch him. Michael Parsons had that incredible re- fumble recovery return for a touchdown in that game. But the defense is looking pretty good. And the defensive line, that pass rush, is the most intimidating part of that defense. Yes, they had that at the linebacker position with Anthony Barr and... Lane Vanderish, and you can move Michael Parsons back there at the linebacker position if you feel the need to. Uh, defensive backs, the DBs are pretty pretty phenomenal this year. Uh, Trayvon Diggs is having a pretty good year. Anthony Brown is having a pretty good year as well. Pretty good uh, dynamic duo at the cornerback position at the moment. You have Donovan Wilson making his name out there at the safety position. Uh, defense is looking pretty good, and then the defensive pass rush. The defensive pass rush is the best, is the bread and butter of this defense and this Dan Quinn system. You're talking about Michael Parsons that could get after the quarterback. You're talking about the uh, a veteran player in Demarcus Lawrence, who is his tag team partner on the other side of that defensive line. You're talking about uh, Deont- Devontae Fowler, uh, former Atlanta Falcon that was out there. He's making noise this year. And Sam Williams, our second round draft pick from Ole Miss, is all these guys are looking pretty good on the defensive front. Have caused havoc, for, uh, have caused havoc to all offensive lines that they have played this season. Definitely one of the best, if not the best, pass rush unit in the NFL today. Now, the only thing that was holding us back when I just did discuss when Dak Prescott was missing those games was Cooper Rush. He was a game manager, wasn't setting the world on fire. The offense. Did not look as promising and did not look as advertised as how good it once was 
uh, in the 2019 season when they were the number one scoring offense in the league. The 2000, last season, the 2021 season, when they were the number one scoring offense in the league. This was the only thing that lacked kind of, that lacked basically from being a Super Bowl contender was the offense. Now the offense is starting to find their stride with Dak Prescott back. He did struggle in that game, his return game against the Detroit Lions a week ago at one point in that game. It was the halftime score was six to three. We only put up three points off and the offense could have only gel and delivered three points against a one win Detroit Lions team. They fought hard and got things rolling the second half of the ball, uh, second half of the game, offense and defense. But Dak Prescott definitely struggled in that return game against the Detroit Lions. You fast forward to his uh, his next game, his next home game, his next game outing against the Chicago Bears this Sunday. Dak went had a tremendous game. I think this is one of the best games that I've seen him throw the football in quite some time. Dak went 21 for 27, had 250 uh, passing yards, two ta ta two passing touchdowns. One interception with a passer rating of 114.5 with a rushing touchdown. With That was the icing on the cake for that performance. Chemistry with the receivers. He, you've seen the chemistry out there with his receivers and C.D. Lamb and Michael Gallup. You've seen the chemistry uh, being unfolded in front of all our eyes uh, this past Sunday. The tight ends, he loves. He's always had it. That was his security blanket last year. And that offense uh, that, had, that included Amari Cooper, C.D. Lamb, Cedric Wilson, Michael Gallup when he didn't play in the four games that he was healthy last year. Dawn Schultz was Dak Prescott's security blanket. Now this year, every tight end that is available for the Dallas Cowboys, they use a good three-man, four-man rotation at the tight end position. Dak Prescott is getting comfortable with his receivers and those four tight ends that they use in this offense. So the chemistry is being built with the off, uh, being built offensively with the quarterback one of this franchise and the receivers that is available to him on a weekly basis. Offensive line is definitely exceeding expectations, and we're talking about an offensive line that was set to struggle with Tyler uh, Tyron Smith being out uh, maybe for their whole entire season, maybe until December. Time will tell, but. A lot of panic uh, was set in by a lot of analysts, a lot of uh, panicking Dallas Cowboys fans maybe watching and listening that were optimistic about Tyler Smith being on the offensive line. Uh, they actually have Jason Peters in the mix as well. He's sharing reps out there on the offensive line. So the offensive line is definitely exceeding expectations without their ace in Tyron Smith. The running game is going well with Ezekiel Elliott and Tony, and Tony Pollard. I think that's one of the best one-two punches at the running back position in the National Football League. When you talk about the Green Bay Packers, their running back uh, one-two punch that they have in Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. You talk about the Cleveland Browns one-two punch that they have at the running back position with Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. I think Tony Pollard and Ezekiel Elliott both match up well with those two one-two punches. One of the best things going in the backfield this year in the National Football League and Heading into bye week, the Cowboys are going into the bye week at 6-2. and two. They had the same exact record around this time last year. Uh, coordinators are definitely growing confidence as the weeks go on, and especially heading into the bye week. Let's talk about Kellen Moore and Dan Quinn, the jobs that they have done as the offensive coordinator and the defensive coordinator this year. The best thing that I have noticed out of Kellen Moore was Dak Prescott honestly getting injured week one in that game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And I say that respectfully. Kellen Moore had a chance to be a, a head coach elsewhere in the National Football League this past offseason. Miami Dolphins were really flirting with the idea. I thought that was the team he was going to go to. Obviously, they went in a different direction with Mike McDaniel, former offensive coordinator for in Kyle Shanahan's offense with the San Francisco 49ers. The reason why Kellen Moore really wasn't a head coach, named a head coach by any team, any th other 31 teams in the league this past offseason was the, uh, the idea of him being too pass happy as a offensive coordinator. Now he has learned through the Dak Prescott injury that the offense doesn't always, just because you have a good quarterback, the offense does not have to be a pass first offense. You can gel it, you can pass the ball, you can run the ball, you be optimistic. You leave defenses at a 50-50 standpoint of what you're gonna do next play calling wise. And that's what he's done perfectly this year, especially with Cooper Rush in there. I think he learned him, he found his true colors his true way of truly calling plays, he's right down in the middle, and it makes this uh, Dallas Cowboys team better. When you you can run the ball effectively, you can pass the ball effectively, you can play better defense. Kellen Moore deserves a lot of credit as the offensive coordinator. He keeps this up. I think he'll earn himself a head coaching job 
elsewhere in the offseason. And I've said it on this podcast. I think he has the true potential to be one day a boy genius, a Sean McVay uh, play calling. Uh, smart as a Kyle Shanahan. I think Kellen Moore is there as an offensive play caller. I'm glad to see him growing. And then we're talking about Dan Quinn, who has groomed the talent on this defense. I have thrived, I have arrived, raved about this so many times on this podcast. How in 2020, how dif- how mess, how uh, much of a mess we were on the defensive side of the ball. One of the worst defenses in in NFL history in 2020. You turn around, Dan Quinn comes in. He's he's put his fingerprint on that uh, Seattle Seahawks defense that won a Super Bowl a, nearly a decade ago. The Legion of Boom. He doesn't have the defensive back group of the Legion of Boom, but man, this defense is looking pretty special and might be remembered as a Legion of Boom. Maybe some a different nickname because of the pass rush that's going on, but he's doing one heck of a defensive job for this Dallas Cowboys team. You're seeing the defense grow. On a weekly basis, players are growing more confidence. They're oozing more confidence, making big-time plays out there, especially on that defensive line. So Dan Quinn deserves a lot of credit for grooming and grooming the talent that is on the defensive side of the ball. And I'm feeling good about this team uh, heading into the bye week at 6-2. and two. I think we could improve in a lot of ways. And like I said, offenses, this was just the best offensive game that we've had all year long. I think the offense can improve. Uh, Kellen Moore needs to keep it up being 50-50 play calling wise, running the ball effectively, setting up for the pass play action for Dak Prescott. Uh, I think the defense can improve as well. As much as I just raved about Dan Quinn, I think we need to worry about uh, containing the run. I think that's the only problem with us on the defensive side of the ball. So you can improve on offense and you can improve on defense uh, during this bye week. And I think we still have a chance to win the NFC East at this point. The, the Philadelphia Eagles find themselves at 7-0. We find ourselves at six to two, and we one of our two losses have came to the hands of the Philadelphia Eagles. We still got to play them one more time, Christmas Eve in Dallas. Uh, might be an early Christmas gift for me, maybe a present, early present from the Dallas Cowboys winning the NFC East. But time will tell. Um, I still think we do have a legitimate chance to win this division, um, but I just think this team goes as far this year as Dak Prescott. I rave about Mike McCarthy as, as bad as the NFL head coach he is, but he's been out the way this year. He's been letting Kellen Moore do his thing offensively. He's been letting Dan Quinn do his thing defensively. And all it's going to come down, and we finally have a top five, top three defense, something that the Dallas Cowboys have missed, and all the talented teams that they have over the last decade. But this team truly this year goes as far as what Dak Prescott can bring them to. So that's how I feel about the Dallas Cowboys at this point heading into the second half of the season. My first half uh, letter grade for them, again, is a B plus, And I'm feeling pretty good about uh, the fact that we find ourselves at 6-2 heading into the bye week.